Back now to the uh, domestic politics. The tweet in the last hour from President Trump, third time in 24 hours, he's talked about Mitch McConnell saying, get back to work, put repeal and replace tax reform and cuts and a great infrastructure bill on my desk, desk for signing. And then he ends it, you can do it. Alabama Republican Congressman Mo Brooks, meantime, also criticizing the Senate Majority Leader when he appeared with us last hour. Watch. So Mitch McConnell is a part of that swamp. Is that your point? Oh, no question. Uh, Mitch McConnell may be the king of the swamp, but when you get to who the, and what the swamp is, it consists of the K Street lobbyists and the special interest groups that behind the scenes fill the coffers of candidates up with piles of money in hopes that those candidates and office holders in turn will not do what's in America's best interest, but will do what is in the interest of those special interests. All comes as the hedge fund billionaire Robert Mercer is spending money to unseat Jeff Flake in Arizona, the senator there. So is this growing Republican divide going to hurt the agenda? Or perhaps maybe you can make the argument that it helps it. We're joined now by GOP fundraiser Noel Nickpour, Real Clear Politics co-founder Tom Bevan, and former Bush 43 presidential writer uh, Ned Ryan. So it's good to see all three of you. Noel, I'll start with you on the fundraising circuit. What's going on here with this Republican feud? Who's raising money? Oh my gosh, you know, as a fundraiser, this really concerns me. And what really is going to be interesting is this Jeff Flake race in Arizona, and I'll yeah. tell you why. Robert Mercer is one of our biggest go-to donors. He is not scared to write a check. And I'll tell you what's really troublesome is the fact that maybe for the first time we're going to see Robert Mercer and his check versus maybe the Club for Growth. Because... <laughs> Flake. Flake has got a 96% lifetime record with the Club for Growth. Now, right. what are they going to do? Are they going to cut and run? Are they going to stand up and face Robert Mercer? I mean, this is going to be like a, a holy war with super PACs. We don't en envy your position of being the uh, in the fundraising game right now. You don't know who's who and who's with who and who's against who. But, Tom, let me go to you on that concept that anti uh, Trump Republicans, and you know, uh, Noel brings up Jeff Flake, and there are other examples of people who are not necessarily with the president. They don't seem to have the support from the base, uh, that's for sure. What, what is the fallout going to look like, do you think, from all this? Well, I think there are going to be a lot of primaries. There are going to be a lot of upset rank and file Republicans who, when Republicans finally control uh, the House, Senate, and the presidency, uh, are not able to deliver on even their most basic promises, including repealing Obamacare, which right. everyone in the House and Senate has run on over the past seven years. And so I think when you see Trump getting after Mitch McConnell publicly on this, uh, I think that shores up his base. I mean, that, yes. th these yes. folks around the country, they don't like Washington. They don't like Mitch McConnell. They think Washington is part of the problem. We hear it. And so and uh, this is going to be... Absolutely. This is going to be a real, a real problem for Republicans moving forward to split in the party. It's only going to get worse. There's so many negative tweets, Ned, on, Mitt, uh, you know, on Mitch McConnell and even Paul Ryan coming from Trump supporters. I mean, not that that's necessarily scientific, but I think it, it, it does speak to what Tom's talking about, the emotion out there. What happens to the Republican agenda now? We've talked all, uh, you know, for the last few months about nothing getting done. Now they're right. all fighting with each other. Now what happens? Well, I mean, first of all, there are a couple of things. I, I, you know, I think Trump came out with the carrot through most of this year so far, and now he's coming out with the stick. These guys have had uh, most of the year, uh, 200 days, to actually get some agenda passed forward. And, and, you know, when Mitch McConnell comes out and says the president and, quite frankly, his supporters have excessive expectations, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. McConnell, for seven years and raising tens of millions of dollars off repeal, and, oh, by the way, let's not forget that press conference right. in January when Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell said, we think in the first 200 days this is our legislative agenda that we can accomplish. And guess what? Nothing's been accomplished. And the thing that, that they have to remember is midterms are a base election. The base is with Trump. Trump needs to bring them down to the White House when they come back in September from a vacation from doing nothing and say, let me help you help yourself. No, but Ned, midterms, it, it, you're right about that. I, but I, here's, I, I'll go ahead and make the final point. That was when I no, but I will say this. These primaries, I think, are actually could be a healthy thing in a lot of these states where Republican senators are up for re-election in 2018, outside of Arizona and Nevada. They are deep red states. And I actually think a question should be asked of these incumbent Republicans. Will you vote for new leadership if you maintain the Senate majority? If the answer is no, they get a primary opponent. I'm sure questions like that, while they already are and will be asked, you're right about that. It was like when um, Nancy Pelosi faced some opposition on the Democratic side, but this could be uh, much more than that. Uh, what about the agenda, Tom? Can you talk about that a little bit? Because 
for you know to Ned's point, this um, the primaries will be interesting to watch, and we'll see you know how the base comes out. But the, we're told governing is a team sport, right? Now, next thing up is supposed to be tax reform. How do you get the votes if you're all fighting with each other? That's a great question, and part of the problem is. The resistance in Congress among some Republicans, those Republicans aren't up for re-election. John McCain, Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, and they are not playing uh, you know, team ball, even though they had been in favor of repeal and, and or repeal or replace uh, and in the past. And so, that's right. And, money, right. So that's a real problem for, for Mitch McConnell. But look, at the end of the day, I mean, I agree with Ned. This is Mitch McConnell's job. And if he can't get it done, then maybe they need to find someone else who, to get in there who can get it done. Um, and I know it's and I know it's tough. It's a slim slim governing majority and all that. But at the same time, uh, that is his job as leader of the Senate. I want to get and, Noel and, back. Uh, he just um, wasn't able to get done. But I could tell Ned you want to make one more point. Make it quick. I, I want to get Noel back. I, I do want to say this. Listen, they can find common ground on tax reform, not only among Republicans, but I think they can go to these ten Democrat senators right. who are up for reelection in red states and say, you know, Mansion, Hike Camp. Let's have a conversation. Let's not go big and comprehensive, but let's get four or five big tax items done. They can get something done by the end of the year and actually, I believe, get some Democrats to vote along with them. You can see Manchin, right? That's the one that's been talked I about. Do. Um, what do you think, Noel, in terms of actually getting something done? As you said, you're just confused about who's with who and uh, who's supposed to be raising money against whom. But who, what do you think about actually governing? You know what? It's very important uh, for the market and for everybody in general that we get tax reform done. But you know, you've got you've got to look at this even deeper. I talked to one of my one of my bundlers, Walter Blessy of Blessy Marine down in Louisiana, mm -hmm. and I said, "Hey, who are you going to are you going to help me? You're going to do anything with bundling?" And he's like, "Noel." He goes, "Do you remember your sales pitch a while back where you told me that if we get the president, the House, the Senate, the trifecta, yeah. right. it's all going to be great?" He goes, why should I put my money? Who should I back? And really, it, dead silence on the other end for me because I'm like, I just ate my words. I mean, this is what we're going to wow. be facing. And you've got people That's like problem, Jamie Diamond who, is, who has come out. Yeah, and Jamie Diamond came out and he's saying, you know, can we not get anything done? Why didn't we start with infrastructure? And really, to Jamie Diamond's point, why didn't agree we? With that. I totally agree we yeah. should have started with infrastructure. It would have brought Democrats yeah. into the fold, and we've had a big win beginning the year. Yeah, yeah. it was all the talk. Remember that time, all the talk about uh, Trump working, uh, President Trump working with Chuck Schumer? That seems like it was about uh, two New York guys. <laughs> Years ago. They're going to work together on, uh, on infrastructure. Well, uh, here we are. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, Tom and Ned, thank you. And Noel, thank it's always you. good to see you, too. Thanks uh, to all three of you.